Hey guys, Greg Benz here. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use the new and improved Content Aware Fill feature available in Photoshop CC 2019 in order to more easily and completely remove distracting elements such as this red mooring here. Now I've obviously done a lot of work to this image already, so let's just take a look at what I've done, which is all in this single smart object. If I hide it for a moment, you can see one of the original raw exposures. I probably had about seven different frames, mostly to deal with depth of field issues. You can see this rock is very blurry, so I focus stacked to create depth and detail throughout the image. Then I use Lumenzia and exposure blending in order to restore detail in the sky and trees and other parts of the image, which gives us a much better result already. But to finish it, I'm gonna use Content Aware Fill to remove this distraction as well as this one on the right. Now, if we go to Edit, to look for the Content Aware Fill tool, we'll see Fill is the legacy tool, Content Aware Fill is the new tool. And they're both grayed out because what Photoshop wants is a selection to fill on a pixel layer that it's allowed to adjust, and it can't adjust a smart object. So to right click it, we'll choose to duplicate this. We'll just simply call it Fill, and then we'll right click once again and rasterize it. Now it's a regular pixel layer that Photoshop can change. Let's click on Z to zoom go in here and I'll hit M for the rectangular marquee. And now we'll tell Photoshop, hey, this is the area we want to fix on this layer. Go up to edit and let's click on the legacy tool and see how it does. You should make sure it's set to content aware and generally speaking, color adaptation is a good thing to use. Clicking OK, we're gonna get the kind of result that is that epic fail. So sometimes this tool works magic and sometimes it does a horrible job. And in this case, it's not very good. It's grabbed chunks of the boat. It's even grabbed this thing from way up here, this little mooring in the distance and it looks like some parts of another boat. So generally a pretty bad result and not something that's worth playing with. You could hack around this tool. There's some ways to get a better result with a legacy tool, but they're a bit tedious. Instead, let's undo that with Command Z and let's use the new tool. So go to Edit, Content Aware Fill, and you'll see on the left-hand side is where you're giving Photoshop guidance on the selected area, which is what will be filled, and the green area, which is what it can use to fill in that selection. So because all of this stuff is in the green area, that's why it's getting thrown into the result, which is the preview window on the right here. So at this point, we still see the same bad result, but we just need to go and tell Photoshop, hey, don't use this stuff. Now, to get this green area, if you don't see it like me, you want to make sure you have show sampling areas turned on and then click on this little reset to make sure you're on the default sampling options. At this point, we can just move this into better view by holding the space bar to drag it over. You have the hand and zoom tools if you need to use those, but keyboard shortcuts with space bar and Z work pretty well. And now we just simply need to brush out the green area. So go up to the brush here, which you can get to by holding the B key, put it in the minus mode or just hold Alt as the shortcut to the minus mode. And now we're just gonna paint out that green stuff. We don't wanna use that. We don't wanna use this. We really don't need this golden area down below. And let's see what we get there. Now the preview's been updated, it looks much better. I'm seeing a fair bit of gray stuff on the left side here. So I think what I'll do is remove this gray stuff because this part of the reflection should be bright sunshine, not the reflection of the gray clouds. And we're getting a better result there. Not perfect, but quite a bit better. We don't have boats and other distractions in here. We can further improve this now by tightening up what we're going to fill in. Scope to the lasso tool or click L. And now if you hold on the alter option key, you get this little minus cursor. And now we can go and remove areas because we don't need to fill in this. This was already fine in the original. So let's just leave it alone. Let's go remove this little chunks here. Basically, the rectangular marquee tool was too general. And as we tighten things up, we're getting a better result here. Notice that even when I remove little pieces here, you get a complete update in the result. So if you're not seeing the preview you want, you've already adjusted the green, you've got a pretty close selection, just go in and snip out little pieces of it. And it sort of randomizes the result. And usually that will get you the result you want by just trying this a few times until you look up and say, yeah, that looks like a good result. And in this case, I think this looks really nice. And we could say we're, we're done here, but I wanna show you some of the fill settings because on other images, you might need to go a little bit further. And these are other controls that tell Photoshop what it's allowed to do. So the green was the source material and it fills in this selection. The fill settings tell Photoshop what it's allowed to do as it fills. So color adaptation, which is like the legacy thing, but with more options, if you set it to very high, you're giving it the license to go and make a lot of changes there. You can see it's getting to different shades of pink that don't exist in the original or we can turn it off and you're telling it, hey, only use the colors from the original. In this case, I'm not sure there's a huge difference between these different options. High tends to look pretty good in this case, so I'll use it, but notice it makes big changes. So just experiment and you'll find the right settings. Rotation adaptation is a bit misleading. I don't think it's really an adaptation as much as just rotating. 
take a look what happens when we click on high. You get this huge shift in the angles here, which have nothing to do with the surrounding. So it's not really adapting, but it is rotating. The case where you'd want to use something like this would be a texture like rocks on a dirt ground or something. And you just want to mix it up a bit so it doesn't look like everything was cloned from the same source. So that's a good thing to do if things start to look repetitive is turn this on. But otherwise, we'll leave it off. We have scale, which is not going to help here. But the place where you would use this would typically be bricks on a low angle or something like that. We have a repeating pattern that's changing size in the image. So if you had you know, bricks in the foreground moving to very small bricks in the distance, this could help with cloning across that. We have mirror, which is great for things like reflections, or maybe you're trying to fix the right-hand side of a column by sourcing from the left-hand side of another column, and you just need to flip it. So you're giving Photoshop the ability to flip it in the fill. But again, not helpful here. So we'll turn that off. And I think this looks really nice. We're ready to send it to an output. We have a few output options here. Generally speaking, new layer is the best option because it'll just send the pixels that it changes to a new layer. If you say current layer, it'll replace what's on the current layer. Duplicate would create a copy of the layer and then fill that. So either of these make your file size quite a bit bigger. New layer is usually the way to go. Clicking OK, you can see that our change has been put on its own separate layer, just changing those pixels. So let's deselect that. And notice how nice that looks. It looks like a very convincing reflection. You could spend more time to further fix some of these little details with either continuing to tweak the tools I have or using the spot healing brush or the clone tool. but in this case, I think we've got a great result and we're ready to move forward. And obviously we got there pretty quickly. You can imagine if I wasn't spending all this time explaining, that would have taken about 20 seconds to get to this really nice looking result. Let's go over to this other mooring, clicking L for the lasso and let's lasso this guy. I wanna take care to select around this little bit of lighter sky here, cause I'd like to fill that in if I could and make it look like one long piece of sky. I just think that might look a little nicer. And I'm on my fill copy where the pixels on this part of the image are blank. We didn't fill them. So make sure you click on this fill source again. Now we'll go up to edit using the same content aware fill. Take a look at what we have here. If you need to zoom in, the zoom tool on the right will give you a good look at the preview. And obviously it's a bit jagged. So let's go and just simply start cutting out areas that don't need to be fixed and see if we can get to a better result. And I think even that change right there is done very nice. It has a bit of an obvious line here. So we may want to see if the tool can get better without having to go and use things like the healing brush or the clone stamp later. And as I'm toggling it, I'm sort of getting to better results, but it seems like I'm kind of dancing around some of the same stuff. So this might be as good as this tool gets, in which case just click OK. We'll deselect with Command D and let's zoom in a bit and just hitting J for our spot healing brush. We can just brush right over these areas and that's probably all I need. I think that looks pretty good. Zooming all the way back, we can Alt, well, let's first get rid of this layer here. We don't need this anymore. So let's delete that, save on our file size and we don't need the underlying raw. Now if I just Alt click, we can see from before and after, we get a very convincing removal of these two objects. And of course we could spend more time to perfect them but with just a couple quick steps in the new content aware fill tool, we get a great looking result. Hope you enjoyed that guys. Be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell to be notified as I continue to release new tutorials.